billion dollars from your children and grandchildren and you with the stroke of a pen. No legislation. No, no, no legislation even debated in Congress, let alone passed in Congress. With the stroke of a pen, the President of the United States today decided that you would pay for the college loans of all these people that went to college, took out the loans. They knew what they were doing. They knew what the deal was. They knew they were about to go get, you know, about to pay way too much for a piece of paper that doesn't even mean much. So it was a fraud on the American people that I've been talking about for decades that, that you don't need a college degree for most things in life and that two-thirds, this is not new data. This is held for more than two decades. It was this way when I was in the legislature. More than two-thirds of college graduates do not use the degree that they got. They go do something different from what the degree is that, that they spent $100,000 on or whatever it might be. So they go into debt. They put their family in debt. They spend the next 10, 12, 15 years trying to pay off that debt while trying to start a family. It, it's it's foolishness. It's absolutely – Charlie Kirk is absolutely right. It is a scam. Get, get his new book. Uh, but all of that, all of that fraud perpetrated on all of these people. But if you fell for it and you did it, the school should be the one to pay that loan off if you're not going to pay it. Not – some other American that didn't even go to college. So you're asking the, the waitress or the waiter at the at the local restaurant, and you're asking the, the folks that don't even have college degrees and, and chose not to go into debt, probably made a much better decision than those of us that did go into debt to go to college. Um, you're asking them, or you're asking those of us that did go to college. I, I, I took out loans for college and law school, and I paid them all off. So you're asking us, those of us who... who made the bad deal, but then paid off the bad deal because a deal's a deal. You're asking us and you're asking those who never even went to college to pay the bills for someone else. That is wrong. It is immoral. It is anti-biblical and it is anti-American. And yet this president, this dementia patient in the White House with the stroke of a pen has just transferred $500 billion from those who Got the education, got the degree, and now will not pay the bill. You're going to pay the bill for them. I'm going to pay the bill for them. Now I I, I cannot believe I'm I'm going to say this, folks. I I, I am uh, I'm I'm actually taking my temperature here. I'm I'm checking my pulse. But but I agree with Nancy Pelosi on this. You heard that right. Nancy Pelosi and Rick Green on the same page. Let's just play this clip. Just listen to Nancy Pelosi because she's 100%. I can't believe I'm saying this. She's 100% right here. Here we go. Here's Nancy Pelosi. People think that the president of the United States has the power for debt forgiveness. He does not. He can postpone. He can delay. But he does not have that power. That would that has to be an act of Congress. And... Um, uh, I, I, I don't even like to call it forgiveness because that in, implies a transgression. It's not to be forgiven. Get, get just freeing people from those obligations. Uh, so it, 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 the question of who gets forgiven, whether to use the term of art that is out there, uh, is a is a debate. Do we use the, whatever money there is for the broadest base of support of the those with um, more people with even less debt or fewer people with more debt, that's a policy discussion. But th the difference between the president doing the president can't do it. So that's not even a discussion. They, not everybody realizes that, but the president can only postpone, delay, but not forgive. Uh, okay. Okay, I got, I got to backtrack a little bit. I, I, didn't, I don't agree 100% with everything she said. I agree 100% with the first 20, 30 seconds there. But then when she said, it's, <laughs> it's not forgiveness, it's freeing, freeing people from those obligations. Do you <laughs> – well, I'm sorry, I got to go down that trail for a second. Freeing people from their obligations is a good thing, according to Nancy Pelosi. So, so why stop at student loans, folks? Why, why don't we just wipe out all mortgages? Why should you have to pay for your home? Why shouldn't it just be given to you? I mean, I mean, isn't that what happens when you when you wipe out the loan that it's just free that that nobody had to pay for it? No, no, nobody actually had to spend the dollars to build that house. Those two by fours were free. That front porch was free. There was no. I mean, that's how these people think, but they actually think that freeing. 
people from these obligations doesn't cost anybody, that nobody has to actually pay that bill. My dad has said it since I was a kid. There ain't no free lunch. He even had cards made. <laughs> Tanfill, I think, is there ain't no free lunch. Yeah, that was it, Tanfill. He even had cards he would give out. There ain't no free lunch. He's, somebody is paying the bill, and it's going to be you and me. Now, of course, Nancy Pelosi had to backtrack because once, once Joe Biden did this, she suddenly had a, a complete change of heart. Her, her, her latest is, she just she tweeted out, President's bold action is a strong step in Democrats' fight to expand access to higher education by delivering historic targeted student debt relief to millions of borrowers. We will buy the votes of folks so we can stay in office. No, that's not what she said. She said, by delivering historic targeted student debt relief to millions of borrowers, more working families will be able to meet their kitchen table needs as they recover from the pandemic. Well, which, which working families is she talking about here? She's, sa- she's supporting now Joe Biden saddling those working families that are trying to meet their kitchen table needs with with these spoiled college graduates that won't pay their own bills, apparently, that, that demand that the American people, other American people, who, who's paying the bills? Those were very working families that Nancy Pelosi's talking about. Unbelievable, folks. These people have no integrity. None. No intellectual honesty. None. They are willing to say one thing, which is actually constitutionally accurate, that the president does not have the power to do this, and then turn right around and say the exact opposite and hope that you won't remember. Hope that that video and that that audio that we just played for you will somehow disappear, which it would have if they had managed to keep their ministry of truth over at uh, at uh, Homeland and 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 be able to you know just like in in 1984 in Orwell's 1984 literally go scrub all the audios scrub all the videos get rid of the stuff that 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 actually indicts these liars that actually indicts these scam artists these these thieves they're stealing from you and your children and your grandchildren I actually think this is an impeachable offense I mean I, I don't I don't see how he can get away with doing this if there is actually a Congress that will hold him accountable to it. See, when one branch encroaches on the other branches, when it takes power that it does not have constitutionally, if the other branches do not push back, if they don't call them on the carpet, if they don't don't hold them accountable, if they don't actually provide the service of checks and balances, then that person gets away with it or that branch gets away with it. That cannot happen here. Of course it's going to happen for the next four months, and what the Democrats are hoping is that they'll be able to buy enough votes with this. That's a pretty hefty purchase of votes, $500 billion. They're hoping they'll be able to buy enough votes with this to hold on to power in Congress, and then and then Joe Biden will get away with it. But if not, if, if you refuse to allow that to happen, if you show up and vote, if you tell 10 friends, if you get people out to vote, and you let them know how dishonest these people are, and that they are being saddled with the bill here, and how wrong this is for the culture, what is this going to say to people about their obligations and their responsibilities. If you can prevent that from happening, then I think there's a chance, chance, I'm not saying, I'm not promising, there's a chance that the new Congress in January will actually be the boldest Congress we've seen in our lifetimes. And it'll go after these people that are trying to destroy our republic. When we come back, we're actually going to look at Article 2 